Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Mm, somebody is very alive. I am not. Ah, ah, somebody is alive out there. Greeting, Papa. Hello. Good morning, Ava. Okay. Today is a Wednesday, right? What is that now? Huh? What is that? <laughs> okay, today is Wednesday and we are going to talk about the, the how many now? Second. The second glorious, glorious mystery. mystery. And the second glorious mystery is? The Ascension. The Ascension. Very good. Okay, so what can we picture in our mind regarding the Ascension? How are we going to contemplate the second glorious mystery? The ascension. What happened there? Can you recall what the gospel tells us about the ascension? Jesus ascended into heaven. <laughs> Jesus ascended into heaven. Yeah. Okay. Why is it called the ascension? And then our lady is going up to heaven is the assumption. What's the difference? Because she just raised up himself. Huh? Uh, he just did it by himself. Okay. Jesus went up into heaven. By his own accord, by his own power. Okay? So he ascended himself. Our Lady was assumed, meaning she was taken by somebody, taken by something. Okay? In this case, taken by God. Okay? Into heaven. So the ascension is a self propelled uh, um, uh, racing up okay? of our Lord body and soul into heaven okay now that is of course the culmination of his earthly life 40 days after his resurrection he goes back to the father bodily okay? bodily with his resurrected body into heaven okay so it must have been an awesome sight to behold right and the apostles were all gathered in the top of the mountain where our lord has chosen to ascend from but our lord tells them his last instruction and what is that what did our lord tell the apostles mia Go, baptize all nations, right? Go and baptize all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You realize that <clears throat> he began his public life by being baptized by John in the Jordan. And he ends his mission on earth. Again, by talking about baptism. Okay, that's how important the sacrament of baptism is for the life of a Catholic. Okay? And this time, our Lord reiterates that this baptism <clears throat> is for the entire world. It's for all nations. And He tells His apostles, get out there. Go out into the world and baptize all nations. No exception. Everybody is a child of God. Everybody has the opportunity to hear about the word of god to hear the revelation that jesus christ came down to earth for and everybody uh, uh, may have this opportunity to learn more about the godhead that he jesus christ came on earth to reveal now that that um that uh, order the command of go, baptize all nations, is not limited to the apostles. That is a command that all of us received. The apostles were there as our stand-ins, as our representatives. Jesus was talking to the entire church. That is why when we ourselves receive our own baptism, we also received that mission that our Lord has given the apostles, that we too are commissioned to go out into the world, baptizing all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But what does that, 
vocation mean? What does that calling, what does that command of going out to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit really mean for us? What does it really mean for us? Can we understand that? Do we know what it really means for us? Hmm? Bring others to heaven. Bringing others to heaven. Joseph, very good. Right? In other words, it, it is a, uh, a command for us to, to be evangelists ourselves. It is a command for us to go out to talk about God. It is a command for us to go out to talk to our friends, to our neighbors, and to everybody, all nations, anybody that we can talk to. We are now commissioned to be other apostles for the rest of the world. We are apostles to our friends. We are apostles to our own family. We are apostles to our own neighbors. We are apostles to our own pastor and to our own parishes and to the faithful everywhere. We are apostles at our places of work. We are apostles at our schools. We are apostles in the streets. We have to proclaim Jesus Christ, not only by our words, but perhaps more importantly also through our example. Right? That we have to be the light of the world like Jesus was. We have received that light from Jesus Christ and by virtue of our baptism. And now we are being commissioned to go out and spread it. Spread the word. Be that light. Don't be the light that is hidden under the bushel or under the bed. Right? Because it doesn't make sense. We have been lighted up. Lighted lamps. And our Lord expects us to shine through, to make that light that He lit in us through baptism to shine through. We cannot keep it to ourselves. We have to spread the good cheer of the good news to the entire world. And wherever we are, we ever, wherever we find ourselves, whatever environment God puts us in, beginning from the family, to our workplace, to our neighborhood, to our parishes, and to everywhere else. And that is why when people, when people tend to question, what authority do we have to be, to be correcting others who are in error? What authority do we have to be speaking the truth to people who don't understand the truth? What authority do we have to even correct some priests who are in error? Our authority comes from Jesus Christ. It comes from right there in the ascension when our Lord told us, go out into the world and proclaim the good news and baptize everybody. Baptize all nations. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And those who try to stop us do not understand what they're doing. Remember how the apostles one day went to Jesus and told him, uh, Master, we found a few people here who are not in our company, but are trying to talk about you and trying to spread your gospel. Shall we stop them from doing this? What did our Lord tell them? No, don't stop them. Because whoever is not against you is for you. <laughs> Look at this girl. Whoever is with you eh, is, is, is not against you. So don't stop them. So these people who try to stop us from doing what is good, these people who try to, to question the authority we have, to talk and correct the wrongdoings of others through fraternal correction, they do not understand that we have the authority of Jesus Christ who commissioned all of us, just like the first 12, to go out into the world and baptize everybody. Okay? So let us not be afraid to proclaim the truth. Let us never be afraid to stand up for what is right. To stand up for the truth. Hey, Eva. Let us never be afraid. Never. Because our Lord, our Lord is backing us up. Our Lord is the one who has commanded us to go out. And the Holy Spirit is always going to be there 
to guide us. As Jana reminded us this morning, right? The Holy Spirit is in His church, okay? And, and He's not going to make His church fail, right? That was the promise of our Lord. The promise of our Lord is, I will send you the advocate who will be with you forever. So we cannot be afraid. We cannot be afraid. Our Lord will be with us. Now, um, and I'd like to end this uh, commentary this morning by talking about the Panamazonian uh, Synod that's going on in Rome these days as we speak. <sighs> Folks, this, this Panamazonian Synod is very dangerous. It is very dangerous to the point of being heretical. Uh, I've seen some reports coming directly from Rome where uh, you see the activities that they're doing there and the agenda they're pushing. They're not only, they're not only pushing for a very pantheistic manner of, uh, of uh, evangelization, but at the same time pushing other wrong agenda that is eventually going to harm the faithful. It's not going to harm the church because the, the church is always going to be guided by Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will never allow that his church get ruined by a few Judases who are in there. But the ones who will get harmed are the faithful. The ones who will, the ones who will suffer most are the faithful, especially those who do not quite understand the, the, um, the magnitude of what is going on and the uh, and everything that that they have to understand about their faith plenty of people in the church are still very ignorant of the very basic uh, tenets of their faith and these are the ones who will be harmed by all the wrong things going on in this Panamazonian uh, synod let us pray for our cardinals let us pray for our bishops who are gathered in Rome uh, that they may be enlightened not to adopt um, the very wrong agenda that this Amazonian summit is trying to uh, promote. I'd ask you to perhaps offer additional rosaries these days and additional sacrifices for this Pan-Amazonian uh, synod. Okay? Perhaps we'll have an opportunity to talk more about it in the coming days. Okay, but for now, we'll say goodbye, Eva. Say bye. Bye-bye. We'll see you all tomorrow again, hopefully. Okay? Have a good day, everybody. Bye. bye. bye.